Hey everybody, welcome to today's GSM Daily Devotion. We are at the end of this week's discussions on the Sermon on the Mount. So let's go ahead and get started with prayer together. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's scripture is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 through 37. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. This week, we've been working through these intense, radical teachings from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Today's topic is on divorce and oaths. Both of these are difficult topics to talk about. Divorce is so prevalent in our world today, and so many families are affected by it. And oaths are something that we wouldn't think we really need to take that seriously. With both of these topics, Jesus is referring to a couple of laws that the Pharisees and scribes and even religious leaders from ancient Bible times became a little relaxed on. They decided if a man wants to divorce his wife, let him. And it's fine if someone makes an oath to the Lord and carries it out, just don't make a false oath. But Jesus not only says we still have to take these laws seriously, but he takes them a step further. He says that any couple that divorces, except in the case of sexual immorality, causes both parties and the next person that they marry to commit adultery as well. And on the topic of oaths, Jesus says, don't make them at all, to God or to each other. Your simple word of yes or no should be trustworthy enough. I think Jesus' response to both of these issues shows us just how serious promises, vows, and oaths are to him. From the beginning of time, our God has been a God of promises, and we see that God keeps his promises time and time again. Through his promise to Noah, his promise to Abraham, his promise to the Israelites, and his promise to all of his children, his promise of salvation, for both Jews and Gentiles. Marriage vows and all other promises are a reflection of our God who keeps his promises. By keeping our promises, we're reflecting the radical love of Christ. When we fail to uphold those promises, we're not reflecting Christ. And living a life of holiness is all about aiming to be like Christ because he's the model that God gave us to follow. So promises of marriage are meant to be kept and don't make any other promises that aren't necessary to make because your word of yes or no should be enough. Now you may know someone whose parents are divorced or maybe your parents have been through a divorce. Does this mean that God condemns them for that? I don't think so. Because although we serve a God who calls us to live a radically different life, we also serve a God of redemption who offers us radical grace. Divorce may not be a part of God's holy plan for creation, and we're simply called to do everything in our power to chase after that holy life. But if we're unable to, there's nothing that God's grace can't redeem. So take some time today to reflect on God's promises. Reflect on how his promises have had an effect on your life. Then think about how you can continue to live a Christ-like life by following these words of Jesus. Now receive this blessing today. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. 
May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Thanks for joining us today, guys. We'll see you next week.